Alright. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Hi, I'm Claudia. Thank you so much for opening this video. Today we are exploring goat rearing. So I am comfortable with these goats. <laughs> so Mr. Bernard will be doing some demonstrations for us. So so what we are going to be doing here, we're just generally going to be looking at an animal and, and look at how can you judge this animal and see the condition that the animal is in and you know if, 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 if this farm is managing the animals properly. You know, so we have the Comancha story which we are going to look at today and train the farmers and this is a training seminar so we are training them on different aspects of how to check the animals and see their condition, if they need worming or what kind of condition they are in. We are also going to be tagging, meaning ID in the goat. We are going to tag them so that you can identify the goats on the farm. This is done for record keeping so that you can follow up with record keeping as you go along inside of your farm. Um, we also are going to be just looking at general maintenance and looking at the pen and looking at the structure. We have a lovely infrastructure here and we want to show the world how, how, how where we are now in goat farming in Jamaica and what is happening right we want to grow this thing so much because you know Jamaicans love them curry goat and how easy it is and how easy it is to set up the actual to set up house. House. this goat house is in the back of somebody's yeah. yard right. this goat uh, house and this structure probably can it, hold a hundred or more goats right and it's about what was it 40, 40 by, by 24 24 24, 24. 40, yes, 40, by 40 by 24 and it can We're probably raise feet feet everybody yes feet right you can put and in how many goats you can probably run a hundred goats in this very easy. Wow. You understand? And, and feed them and take care of them and, and make a profit out of this. Because as I was telling you earlier on, mm -hmm. we cannot find goats in Jamaica to buy now. They are in short supply, right. breeding stock. You know, it's very, very much. We've been short supply for very long, everybody. Why? Yeah. David, Mr. Yeah. Davis is coming along. <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I get into this, blow it out of the water. All right. <laughs> I hear that. She's going to blow it out of yeah, the water out when out she gets there. You know how it's going to be. You have to go big. And I want to tell you something, you know, people. She come inside here afraid of the goat. Was afraid. And now she's near standing yeah, up with I'm us on the goat. The goat. So it looks like she's climatizing herself to this love, beloved animal of ours, the goat. And anything we are doing here, Goat and sheep basically is the same practices. So whenever I say goat, I'm talking about goat and sheep because there is also a great demand in Jamaica for goat and we need, we sheep. We need to tell them the difference between so uh, goat meat, so when you goat say meat is, goat, yeah. is chevron. Right. And sheep meat is mutton. It's mutton. Did you all know that? So the whole of us eating mutton sheep meat and talking about is curry goat and it's we not curry goat and we import <laughs> the old sheep from foreign yes because foreign eat lamb which is a which is a, a sheep that is under one year old mm -hmm. and then take Fresh. the old thing them and send it come to jamaica right. and we and use we it curry. and we curry it and call and it curry, curry goat, goat. no and more we, of that people and we don't realize we it. need to raise our own goats right we right now statistically we are only producing 10% of the small ruminants in Jamaica. That means we only, you see, we're goat and sheep. We only produce 10% of this in Jamaica. Imagine. 10%. And look how much 90% of it is imported. It's imported. 90% of this is imported. Can you all just see So we do it? import goat meat. Very little, but most of what we import is sheep, sheep meat, is sheep meat. Which, mutton, is mutton, which is mutton. Which is mutton. Right. So if we can produce enough goat meat, we don't have to import so much sheep meat. Right? But, but, and, and also, if we, I don't, I don't remember the statistics, but if we can even increase goat and sheep production by even 10%, can you imagine how much US dollar we would save for yeah, this country of ours? Yes. Yeah, we sure. And then it. we can start exporting. Well, if we can cover those numbers, it's going I'm to I'm sure time. we can. We have whole heap of land. We have holy for people. But the farmers don't believe? have the land. Because the farmers don't have access to the land. You help them? Are you going to help the farmers land access land it? Boats. All right, let me see. How much land do you need? How much land? <laughs> Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. So what we're calling these goats, Tony? Dinner and supper. Dinner, dinner and, and supper. supper. <laughs> Watch it, dinner. Watch it. All right, guys. Again. We have a practical session. We can just sit down and talk, talk, talk. 
and we will show you how we actually put that talk to work. So we would glad, glad that we have Mr. Bernard with us. Mr. Bernard has been a good farmer. How much you Mr. Bernard? Ball in a good thing. All right. <laughs> That's why I'm a Kingstonian, right? And in Kingston, people don't realize that I think that Kingston is the biggest goat area in Jamaica. You guys criticize me all the while, but I think Kingston have more goat than anywhere else. I can't agree with you. And I carry him for some tour, you know. I said, yeah. Mr. Mr. Brown, come with me, carry come show you. He said, what? He said, me want to see that, you know, because I never believe me. And we're going to Rima. And we're going to Rima. Going to Rima. 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 When the man see we in a Rima, you know, in, in concept change, Spanish Town Road. <laughs> Kingston farmers really doing a real good job. Yeah, man. Both rearing. I think you guys more set for the come more commercial. Yes. And even the rural one. Right. Just to be honest, because they're following best practices. Best practices. Animals, they mean small, confined pieces. Animal house, 300 animals and I feed them with yeah, man. what they find around them community. Mm. So we use like me. I use waste products to feed my animals. So, mango peeling, I got to the processing plants, mango, pear, breadfruit, all of these things, the skin. In mango season, between like February going down to August, I collect 700 pounds for the way the waste coming out of these factories. I collect 700 pounds of mango skin and mango. And I just give that to my goats, nothing else I feed them on. And they always have to have the roughage, which is the hay. I always have hay in my pet. And that's all the feed. And if you ever see them shine and look pretty. And the milk coming like them, when I wean them off, the milk can't stop being produced. All right, so one of the first things we want to talk about, we talk about nutrition earlier. We talk a little about record keeping. Dr. Matthew is supposed to talk about health. We're hoping that you will have, you know, be here before. So when you come in here, we'll look at all the assets. But for now, we're going to look at some of the basic ones. The first thing I came in here and asked the guys when we were talking about body condition. Remember what, earlier, I was saying, me full of rib, and you can use me to determine how that you're going to feed me, compared to the guy who have on more weight. <laughs> so I asked earlier, body condition is from one to five. One being the thin, five being the fattest. I want to score some of them animals here for me. So this one, what kind of body condition do you think this animal is in? From one to five. 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 This one here? Yeah, five. So Bernard scored for them. I just said three. 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 The reason why you say five, she look fat, but she pregnant. She pregnant. <laughs> she pregnant. <laughs> she pregnant. So we, we can't compensate baby fat into our actual body weight. Okay. What guys. about this one here? This black one looking like me in our way. <laughs> no. no it's a zero. I will give this one about a, a, a two and a half. And remember now, the body condition thing is a physical appraisal. So you can look with your eyes then, but what I love to do is touch. What I try, what I try to look onto is the pin bone. You see them bone, I want to see them out so you can feel it. It's either you feel a layer of flesh or a layer of fat over it. Not me the animal, but you feel the direct bone. You know the animal is about one to two. And then you look again, and then here, you can feel the ribs. Mm -hmm. You must feel a little meat, meat, meat a little meat. Like a layer. If, it, like a layer. If you feel the bone, them juking in your hand, so and you can see the formation of the meat. Body condition but it, it, it's up. All right, in that case, we have rules. If your animal is about 3.5 before she gives birth, would we expect her to drop below two? We compensate for that. Because she's going to start losing it because she has to take up. But once she gone down to 2, 1.51, one. Yeah, in a chunk. Yeah, so yeah, like that, that like that. Right. Like she will still lose a little bit, but she's in top shape. It will come up, uh, it will come up quickly uh, after. So once that's an important thing. You condition the animal before she gives birth and watch the condition after. It dictates how your feeding program is. And remember that this condition when she have when she have kid will just drop that like in one or two days if that nutrition is not, not up all right because she's going to wear a call when we talk about energy she's going to wear a call a negative energy balance she can't produce she cannot consume the amount of feed she needs to produce the milk that she needs so her body now start take from her body reserves right. so if you look it's at a female woman in here a young girl get pregnant when you look, you see our body start to go down, even though she are eating up the same way. It happens with the same animal. So we have to take that into consideration. So my advice, 
When she gives him birth, he needs a high energy yeah. diet. And the word that he says, he, he keeps saying high energy. Energy is to milk. Don't forget that. It's not the protein to milk so much. Enough. It's the energy. It's the energy that produces the milk. That is when that milk production shoots through the roof. Because guess what? When you feed the goats, like for my, my, my situation, I was telling you about mango. When you feed the goats with the mango and that sweet and all of that, which is the natural sugars and is energy. Whole heap of energy is in it. And you see it with even us as humans. Some girls take care of your pity and also some women will do it. Same it comes down to culture, probably how, you know, how, she get grow, how they grow up. But that's just the truth. So that is something we have to take into consideration. But in that case, you saw me only animal, so only animal, milk her out and freeze that milk. Cool? I will uh, make, she feed, uh, make the kid feed two, three, four times a day. Mm. Um, do you go chocolate and milk fever? Yes, they do. Yes, yes. yes they do. But we do, I don't want to see much cases in, 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 in Jamaica. Why? I think we feed the animals them relatively good. And I think we have a good calcium reserve supply to animals. So we end up with a deficiency. Unless that animal have some farm a problem from the food can. I don't see any vets saying we have any milk fever issues. No. One of the things I'm going to also throw out to you so, is that um, I highly recommend the mineral. Yes. It's so it, it is critical. The, the bag feed thing, as me I tell you, you know, is not so important, you know, like the mineral. You yeah, know. I agree. You the, mineral is, the mineral is top shot. I have a goat. I have a, a female, right? And a whole lady. And we talk about the age. Remember, we're talking about the age. She's like about eight, nine years old. And she had she had a kid on her. And I ran out. Because in the rainy season, this time I don't have any mango. I don't have a lot of forages. I'm almost feeding bag feed and hay and the bush give them. And I didn't have I ran out of mineral for about three or four days. You see by the, the third, I think about the third day, she went down on her knees. That's something. Anytime you see that, it's usually a mineral deficiency. You will see them going down on their knees. Like, you ever see a goat kneel down on their knees? Yeah, man. When you see them kneel down on that knee, mineral deficiency. That's usually the case. That's what I found. And when I saw it, I went and I ran. It was in the holiday. And I ran and I got the mineral. And I gave it to her. She almost went down. And you know what happens? Once you make the goat... Once you make that nutrition fall, just like us as human beings, everything pertains to us as human beings. You know what happens? The mineral go down, the, 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 the nutrition go down, she goes to the susceptible to sicknesses, yep. parasites, everything is going to attack her. It's just like we, when I was young, every night we gone out all over the place and we <laughs> not sleep good and not eat right. Every month we get sick, flu, everything past me. <laughs> It used to attack me. After me get married, me not have a problem there again. So, <laughs> why is it take care of you? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, it, it is so important. And that mineral aspect of it. And your nutrition has to be up at all times. Very important. So, so Mr. Bernard, end on a good note saying that once your nutrition pool is start to you start the animal start being susceptible to a lot of the problems. All the sicknesses. All right, so make a look at these animals. And human beings too, you know. That's the point, you know. Mm -hmm. We as human beings, if you do, especially when you're getting older too, you have to eat right. Eat your vegetables and eat the right type of food and stay away from the chemicals. See it here now? So one of the first things a Jamaican farmer will face with poor nutrition. And it's one of the biggest problems, not only in Jamaica, regionally across the world. Worm bird. Yep. Internal parasites probably cause the most mortalities for small farmers. So, we have animal here, the nutrition might be off. What's the first thing you look for when you, if you want to if your animal have worm? Good. Who can tell me? You know, you know why you answer me, you know? Who want the new people in your answer? Worm? Yes, when the animal have worm. Internal parasite is the word. Them scratch them back up. You look on the, look on the body. The ear, the ear, yes, I like that. The coat can give you. The coat, the sheen, all right. That's a good observation. The animal should look glossy. Let's ask you a question. Out of all these animals, which one of these animals you have the most glossiest body? The one, the one. Which one? The one. This one? No, no, no. 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 This one. The pregnant one. one to me looks yeah. shiny. Yeah. 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 Up. Yeah. And watch here. We're going to check them, you know. We're going to check them and even see a the, difference. the differences. All right. When you guys have time, who have smartphone? Everybody have smartphone now, 2020, right? 
Nobody really have bangers. If you have bangers, then say you want a scammer. <laughs> so, when you go on your smartphone, I want you guys to type in Famacha. F-A-M-A-C-H-A. Famacha. You guys see it clear? Just write live. When you go to the doctor, me and the females, the, doc the doctor will check on the eye, right? Mm -hmm. And say, why wow, you think look pink or you feel man, you need it. And give you some oh, iron tablets. Similar thing for the animals. But in this case, you to say they want to be worm. If they have too much worm on them or not. So come. Oh, you have, you have I wanted to say one more thing to you to make you understand what the worm thing is all about. What happens is that the worm attaches itself inside the stomach and suck the blood. That's what causes the eye to get pink because they are literally feeding on the blood inside the animal and sucking the gut and sucking out all of that blood. That's what's happening. So the food, the, the, the goat is eating the food. The food is going in the stomach. It process it through him ruminants. And when it goes down there, the worm eats it back. Worm and it, it's a worm you are feeding. Basically. That's what happens. You are feeding the parasites. You are not feeding, you're, you're not feeding the animal. That's why it drops off the weight. Because right. of the blood. It's the same thing with the ticks. Him suck the blood. So you have rotation. internal and external parasites. So what we do we check now? So we check the, the coat as what my regime say. He said, well, if the coat looks too shaggy, you think the animal have like a worm. You're That's the only thing to use because it can be a mineral deficiency no, no. too. That's correct. Why him have that shaggy coat? But yeah. alright, we say him look yeah. shaggy. Him have minerals, so probably he's a worm. So how are we going to check if the animal have worm? I want you guys to look on the Famacha chart. It show you. It has five different colors. The closest to me on this side, the very red one, means the animal is okay. When it gets too pale to the end, that means the animal wants to deworm. So we're going to check this animal, and we're going to make you guys tell us where on the chart you think this animal lies, and if we need to deworm the animal or not. So come, we teach her to do the eye, make you guys watch yeah, it. Mr. Bernard, put your shoulder. Alright, so you'll basically... Is the Wi-Fi on? You, you yeah, bring on down the eyes and you see the color. I don't know if you can all see the no. color here. You see, it's palely it's white. Deep, it's, you know, almost white. If you look deep down in there, it is almost white. You see it? Well, and it's the same thing with human beings, you know, when you tell you anemic come, and all those kind of things. Come, look come closer. Yes. Look. look at the chart. Who have flashlight phone? I need that, I need that phone that light on it. Let me your phone again. Let me light. And put that eye. Put it close to the eye for me. This this coloration which, also. Which, what's the color? The second to the last one. Second to the last one. Yeah. Come, young, 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 you were man, man. Why you were me? Do make me see. No, I'm going to tell me. I'm going to raise goat. I'm going to raise goat. I'm going to deworm them. You drench them. You can intramuscular. I can inject them. Intramuscular, that's in the muscle. In the neck. Right here. What about this one? Why you lift the skin? That's subcutaneous. So you lift up the skin. You lift up the skin. And you put it inside your vet will show you that. That's not my job. That's a problem you can get. They call injection site reaction. So you inject the animal, that is the and you don't right. rub in the chemical properly. Mm -hmm. So it starts to be When you inject but the animal, please rub it in gently. Massage it. Massage it. Circulation. Massage it into welcome, welcome, the muscles. Welcome everybody. I am William All right. Steel. That's one. And the next thing that can cause the injection site problems is using one needle. I recommend farmers, it might be a little bit expensive, but change the needle them as often as you possibly can. So that, whatever, if, whatever transfer was put, can go to the, that's what I'm saying, that's why I say, change the needle as often as possible. Sometimes we can't do it, that's what the truth is. What about sterilizing? What about sterilizing? I, I recommend, that's the best practice. So I'm in a goat demonstration. 
those of you who want to go into farming. You can reuse that needle to the same boat. Yeah. I, would okay. I would not recommend that. <laughs> so after you use it, this you have to go just turn it around. If you can. Best practice. Is Best practice. practice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Best practice. Yeah. 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 Would you, would you, you take out a needle from Mr. Brown and then get his vaccine and vaccine? No, I do it. No, I do it. So it's the same thing for the boots. Same thing for the boots. All right, wait, I want, I want the, the pregnant one. Yeah, the farm stand. All right. Hold on. So we'll just show you. Look like. As much of it as you can. Look like. Look like. All right, we're going to check our eyes them now. So you remember this one. How this one was what? Four. They could check that one, you know. Give me that one. Give me that one. What do you like? Eh? How do you change the view, man? You put the eye on somebody. Yeah, man. She look like about a two on the child. Yeah. Yeah. Do one more. That's this girl here. Yeah. So, what's something you were meant to do in this place? Now, one of the things that I want you to pay attention to with this worming thing, yeah. why, why are we seeing these results here? It's because of the rain, the wetness, the, you know, all of these things contribute to the wetness. So one of the things is that in the worming time, I was talking to Mr. Council earlier and he would tell me a while ago, I said, boy, I'm trying to get these people to understand that this metallurgy and where we're going now with this whole thing that you know when we do these YouTube you need to watch them because we have so much information there. So this worming thing, when you let you know these goats, you know, you don't want to let them out at seven o'clock or six o'clock in the morning. You, know. you don't want that. Because the grass is wet and the worm is up there on the grass. And when they go and eat the grass, they are eating the worm and it's going into their digestive system and you get the worm burden problems that you are seeing. That's where this worm thing is very prevalent. So in this wet time, right, and you, you send out the goats early. So that is what happens. The ideal situation is when you're going to let out the goats, then, let them out 10 o'clock, maybe 12 o'clock. I don't know. You go out there, you check your grass and see if they're wet. Yes, but when you're hungry, you're going to eat it. When you're hungry, you're going to eat it. Right? What can happen then is you set up your feeding. Time. According to that, yes. you say, yeah. okay, based on my human situation here, yes. I'm going to feed the grain first in the morning, in the morning right. so that the grass can go on. Dry down. Dry down. Right. And then now, when, it, when, it, when the grass dry down, that is when you, you go, oh, so you just take that into consideration Ooh, when you feed it. You know something? You have some farmers, you know, I know farmers. Who don't let out them boat till four o'clock in the evening. I know farmers who do night feeding late late in the evening. And the reason is just because you want that dry grass and you don't want those parasites on the grass to be eating. That's what I think is happening right here. Because when I come here this morning, these goats gone out already early in the morning. So you carry them, go feed them some worm this morning and come in back. And then you worm them out now. And then when you're done worm them out, you so kill all the room, you send them back in at the thing and then eat some more worm. I want to tell you this though. The drugs, they build up resistance to parasites. Very important for you to understand. So over time, you keep doing this. You end up now saying every month you're going to worm out this animal. Right? You have now destroyed the immune system. Right? And how you're going to build it back. Sometimes you might have end up calling the animals. Yep. That's what you end up doing. So, worming is a problem. You could talk about some other things. You have a lot of dewormers out there on the market. You have the injectable ones. You have the oral drench ones. Reco talk to your vet. Make your vet recommend what it is for you. Sorry, Peter. No, you must ask a vet. Make your vet consult. Mm -hmm. Consult with your vet regarding what dewormer you should use. Because there are different, different types. So all of us mustn't play a doctor all the time. Please don't play a doctor. <laughs> you need I am no a doctor. vet. You I need, am no doctor, so get a vet to make your recommendations. Vet sometimes to advise you. This is a very important injectable vaccine. The big talk about vaccine I want to know. Who are going to take the coronavirus vaccine? No way. Who are going to take it? You know not take it, I'm not a coronavirus. You know not take it? No. I'm not a coronavirus. Guess what this vaccine means? 
But guess what, guys? This is a very important vaccine Be good. for your goats. Be good. Believe me. From the animals at six weeks of age, I would advise you guys. It protects you against what you call now Colostridium bacteria, which cause like lockjaw, tetanus. Tetanus. Everybody knows tetanus. Yeah, man. An animal ever did this animal them stiff up so? Yeah. I know it can't open. Oh, all right. And the, it frees up inside like them lungs and, and the whole body thing. The muscle does contract. Mm. And you don't protector. hear them crying. They go, uh, and you don't hear, you don't hear the kid cry. And they stiff now. Stiff now. They just uh, stiff, 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 calm out. This is what protects you against mm -hmm. it. And it's cheap techno shot. It's one of the most criticalest thing in terms of food. And go out rearing. And you know where this tetanus comes from? Anybody know where the tetanus lives? Where does it exist? In the lung? Eh? In the lung? No, where it exists in the earth? Where is that? In the dirt. Tetanus is in the dirt. That's why we as in the side. That's why when we get cut, yeah, we say I'm going to get a tetanus shot. Right? It is very, very, very important, the tetanus aspect of it. Otherwise, from tetanus, they are, I think this is an 18 one. What it means is that this vaccine covers eight different kind of diseases or sicknesses. And the booster shot. It vaccinates against eight different kind of things. Another thing that I will also point out with this vaccine, and I will tell you, the tetanus usually can come through the bloodstream. So like this, it is a cut, you get a cut or something. Like people who... The, the, the de honing this was something even very close to my farm. When you do de honing and you de -horn the goat, and you expose a little flesh when you do that de -horning. you should vaccinate the animal six weeks, as he said. You should vaccinate that animal before you do de honing Even wolf trimming, because once you explode, expose the flesh to the dirt or anything, they can get tetanus. And you will lose it so it's not a one-time shot for the life of the animal? No, it is. Alright, so let me just tell you. I'm not regret, but I will tell you. What you do, say between four to six weeks before that animal have the kid, you usually vaccine the mother. And when you vaccine the mother, that that that, that immune response, it ends up in that cholesterol milk. It ends up into that. That's why the cholesterol milk that exists in that goat for the first, what, 12 hours or so. It is so important because... I don't cut you, Mr. Bernard. Mm -hmm. What you just said, quiet, it just drives in the part about the record keeping. Yep. In order for you to know when to vaccinate, you have to know when the animal gets pregnant. Don't yes, you? and you have to know when to go vaccinate. Mm -hmm. yes, because very that, important. that cholesterol is a powerful... Is a, it becomes a super cholesterol when you do that vaccine. You know, super. And it protects that animal. So when that kid born... Um, when that kid born, that kid will already um, vaccinate. been vaccinated yeah. because that is coming through the mother's milk. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing with we are human beings, all those things. We, we as human beings, we pass all of those things to the cholesterol milk. And that is why breast milk to best feed milk. children is the best, best thing. Milk. Because every little thing will bother the mother if she's sick. When she gets sick, the milk becomes protected and protect that child. That's what happens. That's why the milk is so important. So that, that is that is something that you have to pay attention to. You are vaccinated at that point, and when the kid born, I don't know if I, I don't I can't speak expertly to about that four to six weeks, but I think you can stay longer. I think you can actually wait till you wean off the kid when you vaccinate the mother at a month before she has kids. Oh, oh I'm not, I'm no, not sure. no, I, that it, it helps with, with, with some form of immunity, but it's not ideal. Yeah. It's really six weeks to give the kids. Yeah. You can give the mother to, to help with that, but it's really for the mother. What they do is try to just tie the mother, mother. booster shot right. into that period. Yeah. So that's why vaccination is important. You see, in intensive farming environment, you have all the bacteria, you have everything, all of this is right here, and anything will spread very, very easily. So vaccination is a very All right, important. so it tie again to Mark and Smith saying to Mr. Bernard, the importance of record keeping. The problem with this pen do is that the animals, you can't identify them. How are you going to identify them? By the color of the skin, or the color of them head, <laughs> right? So we need some form of identification method. 
So we have the ear tagging method. You guys see it? Simple. I think the whole of this might cost ten thousand dollars something, probably eleven thousand. About the applicator, this is five thousand mash, and then the bags and the numbers. I think the next five thousand mash, and it's pretty simple. It comes in two parts. And I call this part the male part, but them say it's a female. I don't know why, but you put it here. And that's why it's a female. <laughs> That may I want to you know. And then <laughs> this part now, keep it inside like this. How many tags come in the pack? Alright, this one I think come with what? Like 50. 50. Okay, 50. For 10,000. For 5,000 much. For 5,000, okay. So, this is it. We're going to do a goat, right? This can, we can get, we can do one, right? No, one. Right. Who, who, so, who should? So is he going to bleed? No, you're not going to bleed. You're going to cry? You're going to cry? You might cry, but just a tiny pinch. Huh? It's like getting an injection. It's like piercing your ears. It's like piercing your ears. Okay. So, all right. This is normally a one-man job, but two persons can do it. Guys, make sure that you sanitize. The ear is supposed to sanitize. This is supposed to sanitize because it's going through the animal's skin. Even though it's cartilage. So guess what? I normally ask a farmer which ear is the plan to use. Because some farmers say this one. Left. Strictly the left ears, or some farmers say I want on the right. Depends on a year. And some farmers say two ears. Or some farmers say two ears. So it, it depends on where you want. So we're going to do the left ears. Right, Mark? Yeah, man. Alright, it's strong. It's strong. So you, you, you try to lift the animal. The, what you see? The front body off the ground. So oh. you can't really make no movement. Turn him this way. T turn him around. And one of the things you see, goats are very smart. Mm -hmm. They can recognize that Mr. Brown is playing around. around. <laughs> that this man is a mean business. Man. <laughs> so remember, guys, look for the vein. You don't want it in the vein. So we normally come. I normally make sure so I position it from in here. And look. I feel for it. Oh my God! Feel it for it. Simple as that. Then, the ectoline in here, our wound powder, or some iodine, 7% iodine. iodine. Too high, we can't burn them. So you put that now? So we know what, what will come next after I put this in here now? What missing now? What missing? Book. My boy and charge the book because we need to make sure so we put in say probably take a picture, bam, mm -hmm. and put say 26 ID number 26 yeah. brown goat. Mm -hmm. Things say she's pregnant, mm -hmm. you know, she have whatever in the comment section, and the young man help we get it done. Okay, so, so but remember afterwards, let's do one more. Let's do one more. No, 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 sir. Painful. Why do women bore their ears? <laughs> not painful. <laughs> you do it when you're a baby. I don't know. I don't know. You do it when you're a baby. When you're a baby. That's, 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 that's even more wicked. When you're a baby. What do you do it with a baby? Yeah. There's a quote, there's a quote right here with the ear notching. If you look at it. Oh, yeah. So that is our next method of identification. So instead of doing this, then. <laughs> that, that poor looking animal here at the end. Mm -hmm. So here's the habit tips. Mm -hmm. That's an identification. From the top means 300 right here, so might mean 50. It's a system that they have. Come young man, your time. So why we don't do this when they are young though? <laughs> just born. That's that's re that's really when I do oh, time. When they're just born. Yeah. No, not just just born, but you know what I mean. Young. Six young. weeks. Yeah. You know. Let the handler do it, um, no. you handler, you go. Come on. Right, Mr. Brown is showing his handling skills. <laughs> no, me, me, the man teach me, so me are showing oh, what he know. Yes, we learn. You learn. Learn, learn how to handle now. Learn. So see him, he might look, make sure he don't catch the vein. No, you have to hold him steady. That goat had a hang of you. <laughs> yeah, man, go to hang me, man. <laughs> All right, so see, finish. <laughs> 27. Wow. One, one of the things I want to make sure all of you understand. 
Don't care how much you think you are an expert at goat rearing. Yes. You're always going to learn something new. There, every day there is something new to learn. You see me here, my barn and a goat and I do it this long time and I am still learning. So don't ever get cockatiel and believe you know it all. So true. That is, hey, it's a learning curve every day. You know, you know, Mr. Brown. Tell me how you learned the financial. The other day, Mr. Brown and me are talking about the financial score and who teach him. You understand me? If somebody come and teach him in a one of these very classes. Training, but, yes. But tell me. It's a training. It's a training, thing. making yeah. you learn a lot of stuff. All right, but tell me something, gentlemen. This thing, this tag, couldn't you put a chip in the tag? All right, I like it. I like it. So that you know. it, it digitally obvious. can just, instead of writing in a book, you put the chip, and once the chip is there, All everything, right, the data is there, you can read it. Plus, you can also find the goat. Yes. What you're talking about? If he gets is, lost. Yes, if he gets lost. Mr. Yeah. Perna needs to make sure that he push this industry. Oh. RFID tax. Oh, RFID. Which is radio frequency. Is radio okay, radio uses, frequency. I have a scanner, just like in the supermarket with the barcode. Mm -hmm. So once you put it on the animal, it will have to be the ears, it can be anywhere, anywhere. not chip. Yeah. And I have a little one like this, and I go, whoop, and it tell me the animal 27 female, whatever. That. And all, that every information will come, will come up. Will come up on it. And any little movement you make on your phone or whatever, update it. They have it in, 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 in thing there, you know, that even when the goats right coming in, mm -hmm. and they're going in the aisle, as the goat walk through the aisle, it, it scans them. It scans them already. So you can know your goats coming in, goats mm -hmm. coming out. Yes, mm -hmm. it pick up. So like, the, 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 the antenna is there. there right. So when you run out this morning, 50 goats go out, 50 goats come, come back or 49 or something wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can have it set up around your farm where you can actually pick up in past mass draw yard now. In pass out to the training so you can track that animal Good, movement okay. based on where you have the antennas but we're not here as it so and that, that's it. where we need to that's be that's where we need to go <laughs> so yes, abroad so. that's what they do abroad and they don't need a whole heap of people to do to things. do it yeah, yeah they try yes. to automate a lot of things that happening you know like even here you put automatic water what? Up, yeah you yeah. don't have to give them water data it, and those things help help yeah man and your system like for feeding the automatic feeding only system feed that particular all right guys yeah. so i'm intimate so, with anyway, these goats today this, 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 this one is really pretty okay. this we'll this black and um white one and very pretty so we learned today about the, the skin of the goat, what it should look like, shiny. And we also learned about the deworming of the goat. And we also learned how to tag the goats. So thank you so much for staying with us. Those of you interested in farming, click in the link below so we can send you the farm properties that we have for sale. And we can always look at the properties for you. So thank you so much for staying with us. Have a beautiful Jamaica day.